It's Gail Sibley here and I am at Robert Burridge's workshop and luckily for us his wife Kate came along and she <laughs> is the woman who takes care of all of Bob's self-promotion or his promotion and marketing and she has kindly offered to give us some words about marketing. Oh, thank you Gail. You know it's Marketing is fun, and it needs to be fun or it's not worth doing, and it's always a, a self-exploratory time, too. I, I know you're probably saying, yeah, 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 whatever, but actually there are some tools that you need for self-promotion, and these are the absolute bare minimum. They are fun to do, and so I'm going to just launch right into them. It's a resume, a bio, and then an artist statement three definitely different things. Uh, I know you know most of this stuff already, but it never hurts to refresh. A resume is a list. It's probably the driest one. It's a list of your history. To make it interesting for your readers, though, only do selected because you know people's attention spans are about this big. <laughs> They're not going to remember. You give them a lot of words. They're just going to flip through the page and go, no, they'll shut down. So you give them just the highlights, tell them what you're working on now, your biggest, most important things first. Everything else, if you can't fit it on one side of an 8.5 by 11, forget it. If you don't have a lot of information, let's say you're just starting all of this business, photos. <laughs> Lots of pictures. A picture of you and your studio, talking about your shows, workshops you've taken, um, commissions you've done pictures, awards you've won, pictures, make your resume really interesting, um, visual. You have to remember you're not in business as a business person. You're an artist so there can be a lot of leeway. So that's your resume. It's a list. The next one is a bio. And yeah, you can talk in the third person or you could be an auto bio and do in the first person, but it's about your history. How did you get to the point where you are now creating? So yeah, if you have been a baker or a psychologist or a doctor or a chemist or any of those other positions, tell people about them and how did you get from that point to where you are now? You have to know that people, that the normal people I call them, the people who are not doing art, they desperately want to know how to be creative. And so when they read your story to see how you made the break, it is just a, a validation and very eye-opening to them. I think that's one reason why artist studio tours are so popular right now, is they want to see how the artist got there and what is that magical place where they work in. Uh, so you have a, a resume and a bio. One more thing about your bio, add pictures. And again, it should cover like one side of an eight and a half, eleven, a few paragraphs on your web page. Nothing really huge. They don't have to read a novel about you. Um, even a Q and A, like People Magazine Q and A pictures, great bio format. The last one is your resume. I'm so, sorry, I already did resume for heaven's sakes. The last one is your artist statement. Probably the most important one. Now, every time you do a new body of work, try a new material, have a new theme, uh, have a new show, do a whole new exhibition, you're going to do a new artist statement. So sure, you incorporate um, things like techniques and materials, maybe a little bit of bio information, but your artist statement talks about why you did it, not how you did it. Here's, here's a case in point. You probably have gone to a, an art show where you look to see the artist uh, statement on the walls. So you walk over and you look at the artist statement and you read it. And you think, what? And so you read it again, thinking, did I get stupid or something? I don't know what the artist is talking about. So you read it again, and you still don't get it. That's called art speak. You don't want to do that. It's not good marketing. You want to really tell your public why you did it, how it spoke to you, why is it named the way it's named, why are the pictures titled the way they're, they're, they're titled. Not untitled number 47, 
or soliloquy or peacefulness. That's, that's nothing, but give them a really good reason. And you put that in your artist's statement. And like I said, statement changes all the time. Resume changes only when you need to update. Your bio changes only when you've done something that warrants going in and changing your bio again. But your statement is fluid. It changes over and over and over and over. These three pieces, along with your photos, they go on everything. They go in your website, they go on your blog, they go as printed pieces that follow you throughout festivals, workshops, open studios, their giveaways. But they are essential parts of your self-promotion materials. Thanks, Gail. This has been great. I love this. Yeah. Thanks for asking me to do this. Thanks so much, Kate. You definitely spoke to me. <laughs>